The Australian outback is a remote, vast and sparsely populated area that spans 5.6 million square kilometres or 3.5 million miles, making it almost 22 times bigger than the UK. In such a huge area, it's easy to see why it can take hold of one's imagination. Many stories, books, movies and legends have taken a hold of the public's conscience. And with such a rich history of stories, the strangest ones stand out the most. From strange lights that stalk you in the cold desert night, a mysterious man-shaped figure that no one can explain, to a lost reef of gold so plentiful it could make you richer than Elon Musk. These are the five strangest mysteries of the Australian outback. Number five, the Mari Man. The Mari Man, or also known as Stewart's Giant, is a modern geoglyph constructed in 1998 under mysterious circumstances. The Mari Man, so named because of its close proximity to the small outback town of Mari in South Australia, 700 kilometers north of Adelaide. The figure is 2.7 kilometers or 1.7 miles tall, with a perimeter of 28 kilometers or 17 miles extending over an area of about 2.5 square kilometers or 620 acres. The figure is of an Aboriginal Australian man holding a boomerang. It was first spotted by a charter pilot in June 1998. He states, it was so big I assumed everyone would know about it. But when I landed back in town, no one had heard about it. He goes on to say that the townspeople thought he was delirious as he tried to explain the epic proportions of the geoglyph saying that he spotted it from 6,000 feet in the air. Later, some mysterious faxes appeared addressed to local businesses and later the media. They inevitably led those interested in the strange figure on a sort of strange treasure hunt, which the faxes promised more information. Some of the clues ended up in Dorset, England, buried near other giant geoglyphs like the CERN giant. But alas, the trail went cold and the clues stopped coming. Today, no one has claimed authorship of this giant mystery, and it remains unsolved. Number four, the Min Min Lights. The Min Min Lights, or Ghost Lights of Australia, are some of the strangest phenomenon to occur in the outback. The lights are said to appear as glowing orbs, almost always at night. They appear to hover above the ground, usually a few hundred feet from the witness, and also appear to have a mind of their own, with most witnesses saying, that they follow or stalk them. The Min Min Lights get their name from the now abandoned settlement of Min Min in Queensland, Australia, where they were first witnessed in 1910 by a stockman riding his horse near an old graveyard. As he rode down the highway, the light chased him until he reached another town and disappeared into thin air. Many people have had similar accounts and say that they have been chased by them as they travel by car. Initially thinking it could be the headlights of a motorbike, only to realize that they are floating too high above the ground for it to be so. Also, the lights will appear to dance around and behave erratically. A few theories have arisen to explain this strange phenomenon, ranging from uranium ore deposits releasing gas, inverted mirages, and more frighteningly, UFOs. Today, one can even go on tours to experience those lights for themselves in Thulia, Queensland, where they offer a tour of the history and first-hand accounts called the Min Min Encounters. Today, this mystery remains unsolved. Number three, Lassiter's Lost Reef. As with many of the mysteries found on this list, this one is open to interpretation. Since its purported discovery more than 120 years ago, Lassiter's Reef, a fabled gold-rich outback quartz vein, has eluded both fortune hunters and researchers. The fabulously rich gold deposit was apparently discovered by a Harold Bell Lassiter in either 1897 or 1911, depending on source. On the 14th of October 1929, Harold Bell Lassiter wrote a letter to the Kalgoorlie federal member Albert Green, claiming to have discovered a vast gold-bearing reef in Central Australia 18 years earlier, and that it was located at the western edge of the McDonnell Ranges. Several years prior, Lassiter had unsuccessfully tried to raise funds in order for an expedition to this fabled gold reef. It was only in 1930 that Harold Lassiter managed to raise interest during the worst economic recession of the 1930s, otherwise known as the Great Depression. He provided the story to the Australian Workers' Union. 
He states, As a young man of 17, I rode on horseback from Queensland to the West Australian goldfields, during which I stumbled across a huge gold reef somewhere near the border between the Northern Territory and Western Australia. The reef was claimed to be laden with gold and measured some seven miles, or 11.3 kilometers long, four to seven feet high and 12 feet wide. In 1930, Harold Lasseter managed to secure 50,000 pounds in private funding to begin the expedition. This included a motorized vehicle, an aircraft, experienced bushmen, a gold prospector, an engineer, a governor general's aide, and several other men. The group endured logistical difficulties and physical hardships, including the loss of the plane. Many of the group, disbelieving the claims, departed Lassiter, leaving him alone in the desert with just a camel. One year later, a search for Lassiter was conducted. They found Lassiter's decomposed body at Winter's Glen and his personal effects in a cave at Hull's Creek, which included a diary. The diary tells of Lassiter's last moments, which include losing his camel shortly after the group disbanded. He was met by an Aboriginal tribe who helped him, but eventually he met his demise due to desert blindness and malnutrition. A carved out tree now marks his grave. Decades later, and many expeditions more, Lassiter's lost reef remains unfound. Number two, the disappearance of Azaria Chamberlain. Probably the most famous or infamous case on this list. The incident in question involves the disappearance of nine-month-old Azaria Chamberlain. In August 1980, Azaria's parents, Michael and Lindy Chamberlain, planned a camping trip in Northern Territory but on the night of August 17, Azaria vanished from her family tent at Uluru. According to Lindy's story, a dingo entered the tent that Azaria was sleeping in and took and attacked the child, running off with her into the dark desert night. The initial police report supports this claim, but however, the Northern Territory Police were dissatisfied with her claim. What later followed was numerous court cases against the Chamberlains and even landed Lindy three years in prison. She was later released after a British tourist who fell to his death at Uluru. His remains were found in a dingo den, along with Azaria's baby jumpsuit. Whether or not the dingoes did take the baby or the jumpsuit remains questionable. Today, Azaria's body has never been recovered, and this remains an unsolved case. Number 1. The Flora Station Mystery Probably the most haunting tale on this list. Two boys, 16 and 17, vanished from their outback cattle station. The discovery of their bodies months later only deepened the mystery. James Annitz, 16, and Simon Amos, 17, separately answered ads in 1986 to work as jackaroos, or cattle station hands, for those not familiar with the term. The workplace or cattle station in question was Flora Valley Station, about 120 kilometers east of Halls Creek with a population of 1,500 in West Australia. The two boys were from city life and not accustomed to the harsh remote conditions of the outback. James was from Griffith in New South Wales and Simon was from Adelaide in South Australia. When the boys arrived at Flora Station in West Australia, the cattle industry was in decline and the station management had been cutting costs. Most of their tasks involved bore runs to check that windmills and other equipment were still functioning. On Wednesdays, when the boys would drive to the town of Flora Valley, they could get some release from the remote isolation by socialising with the townspeople when they went to pick up their mail and supplies. But on the afternoon of Monday, December 1st, 1986, the two boys did not reply to their twice-daily radio checkups. The station owner visited the house where the two boys were staying and found their Datsun ute missing. No one knows where they were headed or just where they were going. A three-day aerial search of over 100,000 square kilometres failed to find anything. In April 1987, a bulldozer driver found the abandoned Datsun Ute in the sand dunes about 500 kilometres southeast of Halls Creek. There were clear signs that the boys had tried to jumpstart the car. An SOS had been formed on the vehicle's roof with spanners and an arrow made with two branches and a star that picked pointed north. Further investigations revealed the boys' remains. The pair walked about 18 kilometers and made a camp where Simon Amos was found with a gunshot wound in his head. James Annitz walked a further kilometer and died, but not before scratching a last note to his family into a water bottle. The message on the lid reads, James, my fault. I always love you, mum and dad. Jason, 
Michelle, Joanne, and on the handle was written, I found peace. Both boys had left their wallets, cash, and letters from their families at their homesteads. In addition to the marked difference in decomposition of the boys' bodies, human blood was also found on James's hat that was not from him or Simon. Decades later, this remains an unsolved mystery. Tell us what you think about these mysteries in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. This has been an episode of Shadow Matter. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and don't forget to click that notifications bell. And together, we can explore the strange, the terrifying, the unknown, the shadow matter.